this is us. I'm Damien. Um, this is here. Um, this is so I'm really grateful to have David on board with me now because last year I was head teacher of a school with no staff and no students. Uh, it was a, a pretty challenging year working on my own and, uh, and recruiting students to the school uh, in the midst of a global pandemic. So it's really nice now that uh, I've got brilliant support from David. Uh, I've got a fantastic team of staff. Uh, they're just the best that I could possibly hope for. And I've got now 30 lovely real students in school and they are just an absolute delight to work with. Um, so it's great to be at, on this side of having opened the school. Uh, um, so um, yeah, math schools. Um, originally, um, the idea comes from Russia. I think it was 1963, uh, a brilliant Russian mathematician and educationist called Andre, I think it is, Kolm, Kolmogorov, um, set up um, the first math school in Moscow. And that came about uh, for two reasons, really. One was that the Russians were desperate for more nuclear scientists to support their nuclear industry. Um, but also Moscow University, which is a, a brilliant mathematics university, um, wanted students to um, be better prepared for maths degrees. Uh, when they came on and physics degrees and, and science generally um, for really many of the same reasons um, that I was talking about earlier that our, our education system um, like many education systems has a tendency to produce students who are trained for exams but aren't necessarily capable of the quality of reasoning that university courses demand of them um, so um, the, the idea with the original Russian math school was that it would prepare students properly for really difficult maths and science courses at university. Um, those Russian math schools grew and there were quite a, there are now quite a few of them within uh, Russia. They're quite large schools. Uh, they're, they're normally boarding schools and they have up to, I think, about 800 students. And I was talking to um, the professor of uh, pure maths at uh, Manchester University um, who uh, went to the Novosibirsk math school uh, and he said he used to travel there on a train for two days to get to school uh, and then stay there for a whole term and then travel on the train two days to get home uh, but he loved it. Um, so UK math schools are a little bit different um, they're much smaller, so the maximum size that we'll ever be is 160 students and around 20 staff, something like that. Um, the, the aim is very similar, though. It's for students with, um, with the potential to do challenging STEM degree courses. Um, and what's particularly important is that they have to have a strong interest in mathematical and scientific reasoning. Um, so they have to be the sort of students that ask questions about why do you know this is true? How, how you're telling me this, but how do I know? How, how can I prove it? Uh, students who are curious about things, students who want to understand physics properly and want to ask questions about the origins of the universe, uh, or they want to solve difficult maths problems and have a bit of fun doing that with other students. Um, every student does the same A-levels, so all of our students do uh, maths, further maths, physics and computer science. There will be some students next year where we focus the curriculum more for them because their UCAS offer says, well, you need to get three A-stars in three A-levels. Um, so it'll make sense to say, well, are we going to focus on physics or computer science as your third A-level? I'm expecting that pretty much always students will do maths and further maths. Um, that I, I mean, there may be some exceptions to that, but it really doesn't make sense in a math school not to do the double. Um, so, but I'm hoping that lots of students will carry those four A-levels on all the way through. Um, there are reasons why, um, in particular, I wanted computer science to be a compulsory thing for our students to begin with. I'm actually not all that worried about whether they get an A-level in computer science in the end, but I want them all to experience the fun of coding because lots of students think that coding is something dry and, uh, and abstract and, and not of any interest. And actually uh, writing a computer program, I think is a very creative and fun thing to do. And the nearest thing I can think of as an analogy to writing a computer program is building something fun out of Lego. I, I think they're actually very similar things in many ways. Um, so we're much more than A-levels um, in, in a way, although the A-levels are the thing that we have to make sure we deliver at the end of the day to get the students to university, 
we'll do that in a very different way to what most schools do. So we'll, we'll go well beyond the A-level curriculum, we'll teach students more, but probably more importantly than that is that we'll get the students to make lots of connections between those A-level courses. And that's one of the great advantages of every student doing the same thing that it's much easier for us to plan the curriculum and we can the physics teachers and the math teachers and the computer science teachers can work together to say right well i'm going to teach it this way that means that i can pull those things out of what you've taught and we can make those connections here i teach both computer science and maths and so that means that when I'm teaching students in the maths lessons, I can refer to things we've done in computer science and vice versa. Uh, and that does happen. Uh, and the same thing happens in physics. When Dave's teaching physics because he's teaching some maths boards as well. He can talk about the way that we teach in the maths lessons and make sure that that's in proper physics and so on. Um, so our students come from a wide variety of backgrounds. Some students have been to schools that have really strong maths departments and they've, they've been very well supported over the last five years. Other students are at schools that really struggle to recruit good maths and science teachers um, and they've had quite a patchy experience of, of science and maths teaching. So, you know, from one week to the next, they don't know who's going to be teaching them. Um, and that's fine. We're, we're here for students who are already achieving very highly in maths and also for students where we detect that there's some untapped potential there. So our admissions process is designed to reveal to us whether students are really interested in maths and science and whether students are capable of, uh, of reasoning with us um, about maths, whether we can teach them in the way that we want to teach them and they'll enjoy that and respond to it. Um, so with students do do an admissions test, but I'd say really don't get worried about that. The admissions test um, won't, won't be incredibly difficult. It's just there to give us some insights into how you think about things. Everybody will get an interview no matter what school you get on the admissions test. And that's really important, the interview. So don't be nervous about it. Just come along and enjoy doing some maths puzzles um, with me. And so the sort of thing that I did at the start of present, the presentation is a good example of what might come up in a maths interview. And we don't expect students to know the answers to all of those questions, but what we're interested in is, well, if they're stuck, do they ask us questions? What kind of ideas do they try? How do they think about things? Um, and actually, another thing, I'm going to be more interested in how good students' mental arithmetic is in future. I've decided that is, needs to be a more important part of uh, our admissions process. So if students sometimes ask, what do I need to do to prepare for the admissions test and the interview? And one thing that I say is do lots of nice puzzles. And there are links on our website to where you can find puzzles that you can do. The other thing I'd say is make sure you can do mental arithmetic, learn your times tables, and don't use your calculator so much. Um, students from math schools go to a wide variety of different destinations and we'll talk more about that later on. Now there's no questions coming up in the chat so I'm assuming that everybody is happy with what they're hearing at the moment but shout up if there's anything that you need to know that I'm not mentioning. So I've talked about math schools, um, there are some things um, that um, are specific to us as a math school uh, in the context that we're in in Merseyside. Um, we have described our mission like this. Um, we, we want to enable students who are really interested in the mathematical sciences to have a massive impact. And that impact might come in many different forms. They might go on to be researchers who do something really important in their research work. They might go on to become teachers who teach in a school in Merseyside. Uh, they might go on to run businesses that, that innovate and, and use the idea of a mathematical thinking to do high quality research that solves problems. They might go on to work in actuarial science, to work in accountancy, to work in engineering. They, they might have impact on, on the world in all sorts of different ways, but what we want to do is set them up so that they have the confidence, the communication skills, and the really well-developed mathematical and scientific reasoning skills that they can go on, have a massive impact, hopefully earn lots of money doing that as well, but that for a lot of our students, that's not what's important. They want to, some of our students, their main drivers, they want to make the world a better place. They want to um, improve the environment. There are lots of things that our students want to achieve. Um, so we follow the math school model, um, which I've talked about a little bit already. What, what's really special about that for us here is that it allows us to have a really well-focused curriculum. It allows us to create a small school. So when we're not like a big FE college where we're the exact opposite of that, 
Dave and I know all of the students really well. Um, and well, that's not surprising. We only have 30 students at the moment, but we're never going to be bigger than 160 students. So in terms of scale, we're, we're like a village primary school and at our maximum size. Um, so, so that's quite unique. Um, the, the clarity of our purpose around developing reasoning skills in the mathematical sciences is quite important to us. Um, and that means that the, the other things that we do as well as maths and science um, are, for example, at lunchtime today, uh, we were talking to students about which board games we're going to buy for them to uh, use in school. And, you know, a lot of the nice, fun things that students get to do at school are aimed at the sort of students that come to us. So uh, that does include sport, but it includes lots of brain sports as well, lots of things like chess and strategy games and that sort of thing. And the great thing about having this distinctive ethos as a school is that it attracts a particular kind of staff. Um, so both the teachers and the admin staff are people who are really enthusiastic about what we're doing. They're very academic and, uh, and capable, uh, um, and they all work with students. So even the administrators uh, work with students as well. So our um, Kerry, who's um, my PA and uh, does a lot of our, our admin work, is actually going to be uh, doing some uh, support work with students working on algebra with them as well, because she's actually a qualified maths teacher, uh, although that's not what we employ her as. Um, so I've got a question just come up in the chat. Uh, are we doing the Hidden Connections Maths Transition course again this year? Yes. Um, so we um, are doing, at the moment, I'm teaching online every Monday and Thursday at 4.30. And that's um, what I've changed the name of it. It's called Preparation for Advanced Maths. Um, and it's uh, more of the sort of stuff that I was doing in the spring and summer with students every day during lockdown. Uh, and then we're going to break that up a bit more as time goes on. We've got, I think, about 130 students signed up for that now. Um, so we're going to be getting more teachers teaching that course, and then we'll take that off in different directions to different groups of students. So we'll be launching uh, more of a problem-solving club thing soon as well. So we're just we're, we're launching these programmes a bit by bit so that we can cope with, there's a bit of an administrative load of when you get people joining the calls, making sure that we've checked everything out with them and uh, given them all the details they need. So over the next few months, you'll see more and more things coming online. So keep an eye on our website and our, our social media feeds about that. But if you go to the outreach page of our website, there's a link through to sign up for that course and we're still accepting people to join that. Um, so yeah, the staff that we've got are, um, the teaching staff um, are just, the most amazing bunch of teachers I've ever worked with, to be honest. They they are all hugely positive. They're all massive geeks. They're all really keen on their subjects, um, and and they're lovely. And we um, we can have a relationship with the students, which um, I'll, I'll I'll talk about that now actually on this slide. So let's let's think about the context that we're in. We're we're, we're on the University of Liverpool campus. Um, which means that um, COVID aside, we have access to uh, campus facilities like libraries and sports centre and um, so on. Um, so that, that in a normal year, that's really nice. And uh, the students have, have really enjoyed using the sports centre over the last few weeks. Sadly, we can't do that now that we're in tier three. Uh, so we, we've had to come up with our own PE lessons now, which has been quite, quite nice, actually. We've quite enjoyed that as well. Um, we've got links with academic departments, so we work with the academics in uh, engineering, physics, maths, computer science, uh, to come up with opportunities for our students and to get support for staff. Um, and we try to carry that university ethos through within our school. So we, we want the students to think of themselves as university students. Technically, they're not. They're not actually members of the University of Liverpool. They're members of the University of Liverpool Math School, and that is technically a separate institution from the University of Liverpool. So we work very closely with them. Uh, and my boss, our Chair of Trustees, uh, is Professor Gavin Brown, who's Pro Vice Chancellor for Education at the University. Um, so there is a really strong link that we are technically a separate institution from them. Um, but the way that our students conduct themselves in school and when you see them working with each other and when they go to their sort of student areas to um, to relax at lunchtime or after school or whatever, you would think they were university students. 
Um, so we're, we very purposefully are cultivating with them um, academic maturity and a, a sense of independence and responsibility for things. So we expect them to organize things and get stuff uh, happening. Uh, and we support them in that and our pastoral processes and, and the things that we make happen all support that, that growing up process. So they definitely are not, although we're a school, they really aren't school students anymore. They, they've already, uh, even though they've only been with us for one half term, they've already taken that leap and they're, they're definitely on young adults now, aren't they? Uh, and they weren't when they joined us in September, they were they were timid and were, didn't want to talk to each other. And uh, and we had to do a few things to sort of loosen that up, make that all work. But it, within a couple of weeks, everybody was really relaxed and really happy to be with you. Uh, and in fact, we had a lovely assembly today, didn't we, where we were able to just sort of re reflect on the last few weeks and uh, and do a few things to sort of recognise how much we value uh, what, what they give back to us. Because for us, you know, I think it's true for all of the teachers here that we would say this is the best job we've ever had. And it's that way because of the students and the way that they respond to us. And I've already mentioned that last bullet point there. We, we're not here to train them to pass exams. They will get fantastic A-level grades in the end, but they'll do that because their maths and their science is so good, rather than because we taught them tricks for passing exams. They'll be able to go into their exams without feeling stressed because they'll they'll know, well, it, it's, a, it's a maths exam. It's just going to be fun. We're just going to enjoy doing some maths or science or whatever. So challenge is really important to us. But when we when we talk about challenge with the students, um, they know what we mean by that. We what we don't mean giving them something that is just really difficult. We mean pitching something to them that makes them think, and then not giving them any more help than they absolutely need. Uh, the the students are all able, but they all have different needs. So some of them are very able, but haven't been taught well yet. Um, and so they, they need a bit more uh, intensive support to get caught up on things that they've missed. Um, some of them are very able, but um, are, don't yet have the social confidence that they need. And so they need a bit of help uh, from us to have the opportunities to come out of themselves and work in groups or give presentations, or in some cases, just, just chat with us um, uh, to give them the opportunities that they need. Um, so they, in a school of this scale, you very much can treat students as individuals and as staff. Every morning we have a meeting where we talk about individuals that we're thinking about how we can make the provision better for them. We are able to be that focused, which is amazing, actually. That's a great luxury compared to what we're used to normally working in schools with thousands of students. My previous school had 2,000 students and I knew the students who were really brilliant and I knew the students who were really naughty and you know that was about it. Um, our class size, um, I, I'm hoping that the math students uh, here are, are reading that inequality uh, correctly there. So when it says uh, classes are less than 17, I mean that we will always have fewer than 17 students in a class, uh, as in the largest class size is 16. So at the moment our class size is 15. We have um, two teaching groups of 15 students each, and we have three two tutor groups um, of around 10 students each. What we decided to do in the end actually is put all the girls in one tutor group with Aurora Gutierrez, so is our, who is our head of physics, um, because she's done a lot of work over the last few years um, about supporting girls in accessing STEM careers. Um, so she's very much focused on that with, with our 11 girls uh, who are in year 12 at the moment. Uh, and whether we carry that on next year and keep the girls like that, I'm not sure, but it's been a really nice way to, to start off this year. Uh, and the teachers I've already talked about. Um, I mean, I, I should just mention the other teachers. So Dave, who we've got here is um, a, a physics specialist and a really enthusiastic physicist, uh, which isn't actually what he was recruited for. He was recruited for his pastoral skills and, and uh, experience in uh, being head of sixth form in a, in a big sixth form uh, at Rain Hill. Um, but it was a, a massive bonus that we got somebody who's a, a really committed and keen physicist as well. Uh, Aurora is um, Dr. Aurora uh, Gutierrez Sosa. She actually did her PhD at Liverpool University um, and she's uh, got a lot of experience in working with bright students uh, and uh, also obviously research experience, which she, she brings along with that. So and she's just a wonderful character as well. And the students really love working with her. Uh, we've got Colin Thomas as head of maths, who's a, a really experienced maths teacher, 
and he's just wonderful in so many ways. He does so many different things for the school. He's just fantastic, and the students really love working with him. Uh, and um, and the, the students also really look forward to their AMP lessons with Niall Thompson. So Niall is head of outreach and AMP. AMP is, um, well, I'll talk about it on a slide later on, but basically it's the bit where we give them the really hard problems to think about. Uh, and um, we were a bit nervous about how some of the students were going to take to that and whether they might be a bit overfaced with it. But they actually, they tell us in the surveys that we do that they just look forward to those lessons as well. So Niall is very unusual. He went to Cambridge University to study maths at the age of 15. I think when he did his step exams to get in, I think he was only 14 years old. Um, so he's a, a brilliant mathematician, but he's also a brilliant teacher, which, you know, the two things don't always go together. Um, so all in all, oh, and Steve, I've not mentioned Steve, our head of computer science, he's just, he's fantastic. Uh, and his, his mission is to get all of the students to love computer science and coding, and he's doing really well on that. Uh, and the students just love the sound of his voice for some reason. Yeah. We don't quite understand where this comes from. He just sounds normal to us, but yeah, they're absolutely just mesmerized by him. So, I, I'm just, you know, I've got such a brilliant team of staff and I could go on about the administrators as well. They're, they're just as wonderful. So I feel like a very, very lucky head teacher at the moment. I'm hearing a lot of things from head teachers in other schools about how incredibly difficult life is at the moment in school and being a head teacher is harder than it's ever been. Um, and I just feel guilty when I hear this because for me, it's really not. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm just a very, very lucky man at the moment. Um, so I've talked a bit about how, how the curriculum sort of interconnects and the different subjects support each other. And the other thing I want to say about that is it's very immersive. So the way that you know the students come to us and they basically are doing maths all day. Sometimes it's physics, maths, sometimes it's computer science, maths, and sometimes it's maths, maths. But really all of it is just mathematical thinking uh, with some nice experiments and some nice toys to play with and that kind of stuff. Um, so it's they are very much immersed and think of it like this if you wanted to learn french you could go to a nice school and do a level french and work really hard on your homework and you do reasonably well you might get a good grade in the exam but at the end of it it's entirely possible that you would not be a confident speaker and listener in french um, but if you go to france for a couple of years and get really immersed in it and spend every day speaking french and writing french and listening to french then you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to be great at it at the end of two years and that's the experience our students are getting with with mathematics and science that they are just immersed in it all day the students that they're surrounded by are, are talking maths all day um, and you don't quite get that experience in uh, in an fe college or another sixth form even when they have got fantastic maths and science teachers um, and there's an obvious downside to that is when, which some people will challenge us on and say, but they're not getting to speak to the English literature students and the art students and, you know, the students doing music and that kind of thing. But we are able to, to a large degree, address that. Um, and maybe I'll get a chance to talk about that later on. Um, so the, we're the third math school to open, the first one in the north of England. Um, King's Math School in London, which is just next to the Imperial War Museum, uh, and Exeter Math School, which is very close to the centre of Exeter. Um, they opened in 2014, so they were the, the forerunners and uh, the head teachers of those schools are, are good friends of mine now. Um, so the first thing I did after I got this job, um, like sort of 18 months ago, uh, was I, I phoned them up and said, can I come over and, and find out how you do this thing? Uh, and spent some really useful time with them finding out about their schools, which are just lovely schools and very, very successful schools. So I think actually King's Math School is the most successful school in the country on the basis of Key Stage 4 to 5 value added and has been so for, for a few years now. Um, so the students go on from these schools to all sorts of different things. Mainly students go on to STEM degree courses. Um, so mathematics, physics, engineering, computer science. Uh, and Dave can tell a bit more about that in a minute. And he's put some information in our prospectus about that that's coming out soon. Um, some students from those schools decide, very occasionally decide to go to apprenticeships or go to a degree course that's not in a STEM subject because they discover that they're really interested in, say, philosophy or something as, as part of the process of doing the A-levels and doing the research projects that they've done, they, uh, they do at school. 
Um, a lot of the things that those schools do and the way they structure their curriculum and the way they teach things uh, are very similar to, to what we're doing. And um, that's partly because we've copied some ideas that we liked and it's partly just that our philosophies are very similar about how we think education best works for um, students with very high potential. So did you want to say anything more about that slide though? Yeah, Hi everyone, good evening. Yeah, so we've actually spoke quite a lot with Kings and Exeter because the simple fact is we don't have students that have left us yet. So in terms of where do they go? So in our perspective, it will be coming out in the next couple of weeks or so. It does go through very clearly that mathematics is massively one of the biggest subjects they study. So say from Kings, more than half of the students go to study maths. But the actual types of subjects they do with maths is quite interesting too. So like Damien said, it could be the case they do a joint honours in mathematics with philosophy. Okay, they might also do... Uh, mathematics with um, all kinds of things, statistics, they can do mathematics with economics. So there's actually quite a wide range of things you can do within the mathematical field. And then there's things like accountancy or working in finance, another degree course they could potentially do. But again, they do a lot of engineering. So there's a vast range of engineering they can do. And we try to encourage that as well because massive, massive skill gaps in this country for engineers and physicists as well. So there's just a really wide range of degrees. And what's very interesting is for students to know that doing our subjects can still get you onto a whole range of courses and it doesn't just get you into maths brackets there's actually a whole range of employment that you can do whether that's environmental science or you can actually go on to in your degree to specialize further towards perhaps more chemical things too so your, your options are still quite open again someone's doing economic studies and global sustainable development on the back of their um a levels at university so some very interesting options out there so yeah there's quite yeah. a lot from the different places so, and, and actually, uh, one question does come up sometimes is if you've done our combination of A-levels, can you go on to Cambridge University to do natural sciences, uh, which is a brilliant course to do, and the answer to that is yes, they're, they're very happy with that combination of A-levels to go on to that course. Um, so a little bit uh, about what we do um, other than maths and hopefully if you've been following our social media feeds uh, over the last few weeks, Dave's done a brilliant job of communicating stuff about this and all the, the fun things that students have been getting up to. Um, but they, yeah, they do get an awful lot more than just maths and science lessons. So let's have that back on. So yeah, so um, the main thing is, is this is the thing that Damien mentioned before, is that we don't step back from all the subjects they would have enjoyed so i imagine uh, talking to you tonight there's a lot of people here that are good at all their subjects in school and you might love history you might love geography you might enjoy your sports and everything else so we do try and keep that going so as well as what we're doing in lessons we've got a lot of stuff going on at lunchtime so as i say on monday we have a french club we have a photography club we do all kinds of things to explore their love of art. So uh, Damien will tell you a little about, about a lovely purchase we made recently, yeah. uh, which you'll see pop up on our picture. But the main thing is, it's a shame that theatres and things are closed because we've got such very good links to local theatres and the museums in the university as well as in Liverpool. So we are going to do a lot of visits and it's just all that's being curtailed slightly. But we absolutely hope that by September time, that's something that'll be up from the off that we'll be doing a whole range of things to enrich the studies. So we'd really try and keep their love of learning going. So I'm looking forward to teaching some psychology in uh, some of my lessons because it's really interesting to me how the brain works. And we link that to study skills as well as a whole load of interesting things, which would be very applicable for them to develop themselves to things like interviews and job techniques. So we've got a lot of careers advice that we're going for in terms of supporting them for careers and progression. So we do support with universities and we're starting that even earlier perhaps than a lot of schools. We might do that in May of year 12, just to make sure we are very prepared. And as pastoral leader myself, we do have that really good intimate uh, conversation with students as a one-to-one -one regularly. So we know our students really, really well and they're very good at telling us any problems or any concerns that they have. Yeah, I think Jamie wants to say something here. Uh, no, I, I, was, I think you've covered that really well, actually. So um, do, do you want to say anything about the... Yeah, so like we say, we've got small classes, our tutor groups, we have a designated time where they will have one-to-one -one time with their form tutor. And as a result, we've got a really good relationship. So we've got a really good family ethos, very good shared interest as well, because we all love the same thing. I'm going to be cooking lunch for everybody on Friday. <laughs> yeah, they're all having a nice vegetarian chilli on Friday as a nice little end of half term treat. So Damien's bought some nice pots and pans recently. So... That should be good. So we do all that. And as well, alongside that, if anything financial, uh, let's say free school meals, you might be eligible for those at the minute. We've got the sixth form bursary, which is a scheme where we can provide some money to uh, pay for lunch and also provide money for textbooks, trips and anything else that we don't want people missing out on just because of finance. So we have that support here 
as well. So pastorally, I think we're quite strong in terms of those supports. And as I say, our building is lovely. Uh, I'll let Damien talk a little bit about yeah. this because you can see his favourite present there down there. <laughs> yeah, the other way, being, being the boss is nice. You need to get some side on how you spend the money. You also have to worry about when there's not enough money. But at the moment, the money's pretty good. So, so I have been spending money. Um, so I, I sent Niall, uh, who I mentioned earlier, out piano shopping because he's a pianist, um, and he uh, he came back with this this lovely uh, 1973 Kawaii Baby Grand, um, which looks great and sounds great. Uh, it's um, it's nearly as old as me, but uh, but it's it's <laughs> managed to last a lot better. It doesn't look as worn out. <laughs> Um, so, um, so that is actually in my classroom, which is like our school hall at the moment. So the students can just come in and, and play that um, during lunchtime, break times after school, that kind of thing. So if we've got students who, who want to learn piano or they want to practice, if they're already pianists, then they're very welcome to come and do that. Um, so the building that we're in, the Sir Alistair Pilkington building, is a University of Liverpool building that's been um, refurbished for us to use as a school. Uh, so we, we have to do a few things in the building, like put some kitchen facilities in for the students and um, turn some rooms into laboratory spaces. So uh, we've got two laboratories um, and we've got two kitchens for students um, and the students have lots of study space and social space within the building as well, because it's actually a really big building for uh, the size of school we are. So we're really, it's, it's a luxurious setting for us. That's just the same amount of space that we've got, yeah. Um, but in in two years time so for the cohort that we're, will join us next September they will spend the first year in this building and then they'll move into our brand new building uh, in September 22 um, so when we've I've been having meetings with architects about that already and I've got more meetings coming up in November to work out the detail of what that design will be so we'll be able to shape that building so that it works for what we need with our students and the way that we teach um, so that's really exciting, um, really looking forward to getting stuck into that. Uh, the other picture that you can see there is the uh, one of the university sports halls that we've been using to do badminton and um, volleyball and basketball kind of thing with our students. Unfortunately, at the moment, we can't use that because sports centres are not allowed to operate at the moment, but uh, we'll, we're hoping to get back in there soon. Uh, and because our students are just in one bubble, uh, because we've only got 30 students, we are actually able to do sport properly with the students. So they've, they've really enjoyed that. And we thought that with the sort of students we've got, we'll probably end up recruiting one or two students that are not very keen on sport. And it turns out that's not the case. And all of them take part really enthusiastically. Nobody's needed persuading at all. They're all very keen to do it. So that's just been really good, actually. Really um, so the curriculum, I've, I've already mentioned this about the, those are the four A-levels that we do. We also have the, the PPEP program, the, uh, let me get this right, personal and pastoral enrichment program, uh, which is led by Dave, uh, and he teaches all the lessons in that at the moment, but he's going to be getting lots of other people involved with delivering that, getting external speakers coming in and getting the students working on lots of different exciting things. We have the Aspiring Mathematician Programme, which is led by Niall Thompson, our, our resident maths genius. Um, and so he's, um, that's a variety of different things. So some of that is preparing students to take part in competitions like the Senior Maths Challenge or the Maths Olympiad for Girls. Some of it is getting students um, to feel confident about doing questions from the, the STEP exams and the Oxford Maths Admissions Test. Um, and we're doing that not because we're sort of wanting to hothouse them and cram them for, for these exams, which most of them probably won't take in the end because they're only needed for certain very specific courses. Um, but we're doing it because they're just really interesting problems to, to tussle with that force the students to really think about the mathematics that they're learning in their A-level lessons so that they properly understand what they're doing. They're not just developing a superficial understanding of things. Uh, and it forces them to work with each other and uh, it means that they get an eye on really challenging them to, to think about things and articulate their reasoning. Um, so it's just a source of really nice problems. And then we also do things like the sort of problems that um, I, I showed you at the start of the session. Uh, and uh, we do sport every Friday at the end of the day for an hour, we all get together and do sport together. Uh, now, we had to improvise on that a bit last week because we, we suddenly realised we didn't have access to the... Uh, um, 
the sports center. So we ended up doing circuit training outside, doing some yoga, uh, and, and I taught um, eight students how to play bridge as well. So we, we did some fine sports as well, which was really good, actually, that's nice. So a bit more detail there about the people. I need to go into a little detail about that day, is there anything else? Yeah, no, I mean, the main thing is, is what's nice is that we cover the PSHE, which you might do in sixth form. And the simple fact is that's maybe what a lot of sixth form do cover, but we've got the time to actually do more than that. So we have a lot of study skills and we're looking at other subjects. I was saying again today, if there's something you'd like to learn about, let me know and we can do it. So we were talking about uh, mental well-being today. We were talking about um, Black History Month last week. So we can actually go into a lot of depth of current issues as well. I think we've got a lot more flexibility with how we do it. And you can see there on that uh, picture there, that's us doing our circuit training in the local park. So uh, yeah, really good day actually and uh, really good fun. So we yeah. do a lot of we're here. It's really good. So that, that mention of mental health is, is really important actually because we we have some students in school who are very self-confident very grounded and you know you can throw anything at them and they'll be absolutely fine we have other students where we know that we have to be careful and support them in different ways um, and actually because it's such a supportive environment in school those students are becoming much more robust and they're really responding to the the support that we're giving them um, we we have one student who's had a lot of difficulty with uh, school attendance and mental health problems over the last few years and the support that we're able to put in place for her means that she's actually having a much more successful time with us uh, and whilst life is still has its challenges for us um, for, for her it's 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 much better than it would be i think in, in a much larger setting so i'm really pleased with the support that dave and the team are able to put in place for students like that um amp we've talked about already um, so I don't need to go into much more detail about that. That photo there, I think that's the students heading off to do some sport. Yeah, that's a little walk, right? Yeah, so that's the um, Abercrombie Square. Um, how to decide if this is a, so? We're nearly we're nearly finished now. This this is the advice that we would give you. So we we published a couple of videos on our website and on YouTube today. So uh, if you've not reviewed those already, then have a good look at those. They're quite contrasting. So one is done by a proper media production company, so it's nicely edited. The other one is more of a home movie that, that Dave's put together for us in school. And they're both informative in different ways. So I'd encourage you to, to watch them both. Uh, and also, by all means, have a look at the videos that Exeter Math School and King's Math School have done, because they also give you some idea about what math schools are like and the more you see of that the, the better you'll understand it because it's quite different to any other kind of provision um if you've not been for a tour in person already or if you haven't got one booked then we'll carry on running those whenever people want them so you can come after half term uh, and we'll do some more tours so it's just a, a walk around the building and a, and a chat with me or dave at the end of the school day we we do those at the end of the school day after everybody's gone home for obvious reasons um which is a bit of a shame, but that's why we made those videos so that you can get an idea of what school life is like during the day as well. Um, the online lessons, so I'll, I'll show you in a second but where on our website you can sign up to join those online lessons if you want to be part of them. But if you just go to our website and look for the outreach page, you'll find that. Um, and social media followers, by all means, on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to see what we're up to. Um, here's where we are. Um, so we, we're at the south end of the University of Liverpool campus. We'll just zoom in on that a little bit so you can see where the, the pink blob at the bottom of that campus map there. Uh, and I'll zoom in even more so you can see Abercrombie Square, you can see where the maths department is, where the sports centre is. We're right next to the music department so we can hear them practising. Uh, and when, when times are more normal, uh, our students will be able to take part in some of their musical performances and uh, we're hoping that their peripatetic teachers will be able to work with our students on things like piano and guitar and that kind of thing. Uh, and we're going to have a music practice room in the basement soon. Uh, we're going to, um, I'm going to bring some guitars in. We've got a student who plays the drums, so we're going to get them set up in our basement. So we, we're very keen on the music here. Um, and yeah, you can see the physics department there as well. One of our trustees is the uh, the head of the physics department. Um, so there we go. The application process. Um, you, I think lots of people who are here tonight have already put an application in, uh, but if not, the, the guide is all there on our website. Um, and the way that um, the admissions test works is that that takes place in um, middle of January, I think, I can't remember the date exactly, it's on the website. We run, for people who apply, um, 
early we run um, an, an evening to tell you more about the admissions test and help you prepare for it so that you're confident about that. Um, and we don't want any student to be worried about that. And if you think that the other students might have been taught more maths than you, then please don't worry uh, because we'll give you support and actually the, the maths content that's needed for that test really shouldn't be anything more advanced than stuff that you'll have learned probably in year nine. Uh, so even though we know that students have missed a lot of education over the last few months, um, that, that won't be an issue. We'll, we will adjust the test to make sure that that is taken into account. But it, it was only key stage three material anyway last year. Um, we'll do an interview. The interview will be 20 minutes talking to me about some maths. Uh, and it'll be 20 minutes talking to Dave or Kerry about um, pastoral things. And, you know, they're telling us more about the school that you're at at the moment, what you're hoping to do in your career and that kind of thing and why you want to come to our school. Um, then after that, we make offers. Uh, and at this stage of our development as a school, we've got plenty of places still. So we will make you an offer if we think you will benefit from coming to the school. Um, we're, we're not expecting this year that it's going to be so competitive that we'll have to turn away good people. But um, we... We do turn people down if we think we're not the right school for you, if we think this provision won't work for you, if you won't enjoy it, if we think your level of maths or science is, is not up to the challenge, then we'll be honest with you and tell you about that. Um, so once we've made you an offer, that is conditional on you getting grade eight in maths GCSE, uh, grade eight in physics GCSE, or if you do combined science instead of separate science, then it would be eight, eight in combined science and five more grade fives, including a five in one of the Englishes. Now, this summer, we reassured students and said, look, we know it's been a really strange summer and you didn't get a chance to do exams, so we were able to exercise some flexibility about that. Uh, I think a similar thing will happen next summer. We understand that in life is not normal at the moment. The key thing for us is that we know that your mathematical ability and potential is enough to actually make a success of two years with us and that you'll enjoy it and not feel stressed by the experience. So that, that's what we're looking for when we're deciding who comes to us. Um, but if you've got questions about that, then, you know, have a chat with us and hopefully we can put your mind to rest. Uh, on GCSE Results Day, you'll get your results slip and you'll take a photo of it and upload it to our admissions site. And um, then we'll confirm whether or not you've got a place with us. As simple as that. Um, OK, so um, I've not had many questions coming in through that talk. I hope that's been informative. But if there's anything I've not covered, now's the time to ask or book a talk, um, book a tour and come and have a chat with, with us in person um, and, and we can talk some more face to face. Um, so I'll just show you for anybody who is interested in signing up. Oh yeah, I'll answer your question, Kingsley, while um, Damien gets that set up. So yeah, our catchment area, basically, the catchment area is if you can get to us, uh, then we can accept you. So if uh, you're thinking that you're quite far away, the train links are very good. Yeah. We have students coming from Southport, from Ormskirk. Um, so there's nothing in our admissions policy no. about distance travel or catchment areas. Um, so yeah, it's, it's entirely possible for students to come to us from as far afield as Chester or Crewe. Um, or um, we have students coming from sort of Runcorn area already, from Warrington already. Um, so that, that, yeah, that's all fine. And actually the school day starts at 9.30, so we put it purposefully late so that it's easier for students who are traveling a bit of a distance. Um, so there is something, I spoke to a student at King's Math School last time I visited who traveled two hours in each direction every day. So it was four hours of commuting every day to go to the school and he still thought that that was worth it. Um, I mean, I, I would say that's probably not ideal, actually. I think that is too much for a student. Um, but, you know, travelling an hour at each end of the day, well, I used to do that when I went to school. I know that's, that's perfectly doable. Um, so um, here's our website. I've had a bit of a glitch with this page today, actually, that we're going to fix tomorrow. Um, but if you're interested in joining us, and if you just click where it says outreach there, then um, that tells you about the outreach courses that are running at the moment. So there's one that we're running for year 13 students. Um, so that's 
part of what we do as math school is provide outreach to support students in other schools when we're not just about our own students. So we're supporting year 13 students from other schools in the Northwest who are preparing for, say, to do maths at Oxford or Cambridge or Warwick or Imperial or whatever and helping them get ready for that. And actually, if we've got students who are wanting to come to Liverpool University to do math, then we're very keen for them to be part of that as well. Uh, and actually, that reminds me, one thing I've not mentioned is that that Liverpool University uh, will offer a place to any student from our school. So they've, they've guaranteed that all the students who come to University of Liverpool Math School will be offered a place uh, on a course um, at Liverpool University, subject to them meeting the entrance criteria for that course. So obviously, you know, that's not saying that they can definitely come and do medicine, uh, but if they, if they come and want to do maths or engineering or physics, then there will definitely be a place for them. Um, so if you want to join the Key Stage 4 course, then there is a link just there that will take you to our Google form and then you can fill that in. And I've only taught two lessons on that course already, so it's not too late to join that course. Yeah, and coming up soon, we'll have some physics as well for Year 10s and 11s and yep. computer science is on its way soon. Yeah, so the next few weeks, keep your eye on social media. Yeah, more things coming over the next few weeks. Okay. Any other questions before we finish? If you were showing the link where all the other stuff is that we're doing for the open even type to experience, so where you were. Let's do that. Uh, I'll just go back to this. So on our website, you can see, like, in place of open even, we've got quite a lot of things that we are offering. So you can see more. You've probably seen some of our videos already, potentially. But yeah, if you click on the open evening information, then basically all the things that we do are there. So we've got the talk we're doing today. We've got some videos. The new prospectus will go on there in the next couple of weeks. So there's quite a few things there. The taste today that's coming up after half term. Hopefully we'll be able to do that in person. Um, yeah, we'll see again, how life's going when we get to that point. And obviously the application's there too, but there's just a few ideas about things that you can keep your eye on that we're um, keeping up to date. Yeah, it's all there nicely on one page. It's a good job that day. Here you go. Yeah, that's what... Uh, thanks, Tabitha. That's great. Hope to see you soon as well. And I, I think we're more or less finished there. But if uh, if anybody's got any um, individual questions they want to ask, feel free to stay on. Uh, but if uh, if there's nothing else you need to know, then feel free to leave as well. You can find the leave button, which I never can in Zoom <laughs> sessions. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Hopefully for a tour of the building uh, or for a taste today. <laughs>